When the owners of this once $286,000 Aston Martin DBS Volante watched their car get destroyed by Hurricane Ian's storm surge, well, I'd imagine they saw it as a tragedy. But if we take this pain and look at it from a distance, say, like from the screen of your phone, it feels much more like a comedy. You see, when this very limited production Aston Martin was towed away and the now previous owners were given their settlement check, they probably had no idea that what they once cherished as maybe their dream car or a great sense of accomplishment would now be looked at as a line item by an insurance company. This DBS, which was probably sitting in a climate-controlled garage just a few days before, is now sitting at a dusty, dirty insurance auction yard where they left the windows wide open for the duration of its stay. Well, at the same yard, they made sure to meticulously wrap this biohazard Ford Escape for protection against the elements. And when you think it couldn't get much worse, a very familiar sequence of events occurs, where a guy who has much more money than sense buys an Aston Martin, but this time for around 10% of its original MSRP and thinks because the auction advertised it with the lowish flood line that he's about to get the deal of a century. And even though I have a pretty rough track record when it comes to fixing these flood total cars, I'm coming off the heels of a very near win with my flooded Corvette ZR1 rebuild. And I also have a gambling problem so severe it led to a second divorce, but I'd bet you any money should be back if I pull up in this Aston Martin with the top down and its V12 engine running on at least 10 cylinders. All that's left now is for the auction to molest this poor DBS one last time by having one of their forklifts rip off a $1,300 carbon fiber front splitter, which was clearly depicted in the photos when I bought it. Now, either way, this Aston Martin has the potential to be a serious machine, just like the Yak 141, newly released in my favorite epic vehicle combat game, War Thunder. With its new Sky Guardians update, not only are the graphics on War Thunder lifelike, but you can con the warships of the French fleet or fly new aircrafts through the Pyrenees Mountains. The best part of War Thunder is the ability for different types of vehicles to participate in a single game session. Players will drive their armored tanks to gain control on the ground while aircrafts and helicopters fly above. In ocean maps, players can even take control of small and large naval vessels. You gotta check out War Thunder. It's totally free and available on Xbox, PlayStation, PC, and Mac and you can get it by hitting that link down in the description box. All new players and those who haven't played War Thunder for the last six months will receive 100,000 Silver Lions, a week rental of legendary German ground vehicles, three premium vehicles to keep forever, XP boosters, a week of premium, and a bunch of other bonuses. To get these freebies, you gotta act quick because the season of German gifts is coming to an end. Just hit my link in the description box and download War Thunder totally free. If you're like me and you grew up on vehicle combat games, or you love history, well, you're gonna love War Thunder. Oh, there's the dipstick back there. I'm a little afraid. Well, as much of the engine I can see through the oil cap looks fine. <laughs> yeah. Right here, this is the real test right here. Xavier, you didn't look? You didn't look I at did the oil? Look. Did not look. Here we go. Oh, this dude, yep. it's perfect. Yeah. Looks like oil, yeah. It's perfect. It looks like oil. Yeah. Right. Milk. That's, <laughs> That's awesome. That is nice. You got straight oil, no water. Let's look at this. I mean, this is just like the hydraulic fluid and stuff. Everything looks at me. Look at it. Although they took, they took the plaque. Look. Oh yeah. And they took that too. Whoever they are. That's a weird thing to steal. Otherwise, it doesn't look too bad. It doesn't. It looked way worse than that. Yeah. We're going to cross our fingers, guys. We're going to cross our fingers and shut up for a second. <laughs> All right, it's on. It's on, OK. okay I'm putting the key here. in the ignition. Let's see if we get anything. Yeah. OK, hold on. Oh, neutral. Can you put your foot on the brake and just see? Or put it. Go ahead, try. Oh, it looks. Look, it lit up. Hold on. Look, something's lighting up. We're in neutral, maybe? Anything like move? Here. 10 seconds before my jump box turns off. Here, okay. Let me see, does this move? No. Nah. No, okay. I mean, it's, it's doing stuff, but okay. It's, it's better than nothing. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so what we're trying to do is the park interlock should be behind the rear seat here. It is on the DB9, um, but Usually you pull the seats forward in order to do that. Seats are completely dead. There's no power to anything. And well, it's a little, got a little flooded in here. So nothing's working. Let me see if I can climb back there and do this. 
Let's see, what's this? This home, that's like a nice... Oh, it's water. fancy, yeah. yeah. Oh, I know. Is it coming up, Sage? Do you see it back there? No, I don't see it coming. Oh, yeah, it is coming up. Ah, I'm so close. What's it left? Huh? I think the seatbelt. Is it on the seatbelt? Yeah, right where you're under your hand, right there. A little up. Back. Huh, I, I can't see yeah. anything. I'm going to have to come on your... It is lifting up more. Lifting yeah. More. All right. Oh, that felt right. That felt good? Yeah. Something clicked harder. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, or maybe we clicked it. Well, what's that? All right, so we're just gonna go back, and it's it's all very straight. So just, all right, it's going easy. Yeah. Wow, really. Yeah. Now that we got the angle and whatnot, don't hit the brake. Here we go. Slow, slow brake. Slow brake. Perfect. Perfect. Slow, 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 slow. Let me show you what we were just struggling with in here. See that little plastic tab with the metal strap on it? That is the park interlock switch. That's what we use to get this car into neutral so we could push it off Xavier's trailer. Just looking over this thing, it's in really decent shape. Yeah, of course, it's got some salt water in it. But uh, one thing I did notice is when Xavier hooked up his jump pack to see if we could get a little bit of electronics just to stick it in neutral, uh, he had kind of a smaller jump pack. This is a V12 European car. They have a ton of electronics in them. What's the chance that his jump pack was just a little too small? Now, I'm really doubtful that this is going to do anything different than it did before, but I have a set of jumper cables here. This is a good working battery, so in theory it should be a little bit stronger than a small battery jumper box. And we're gonna get in. I'm gonna show you what I saw when Xavier hooked up his jump pack. If I remember correctly, we got a couple lights here in the center that popped on. Let's see here. You see that? It's lighting up. And if you listen really closely, there's like a motor going on in the passenger side of the car here. There's nothing going on in the gauge cluster, but hey, our key is in the ignition slot. Here is our seat. Nothing at all, nothing. Look, these are actually lit up here on the side of the seat now. It's still not doing anything. Lock, unlock button, nothing here is reacting. So we obviously have some major electrical issue going on. Now, I just got this car yesterday, but Hurricane Ian, that was like four months ago. When it comes to flood cars, especially saltwater flooded cars, time is of the essence. So we basically don't have any essence left at this point. But since we saw that the dipstick looks near perfect, I'm going to initially focus my efforts on the interior to get everything that's wet out of the car now and find any electronics that might have been damaged. That doesn't mean I'm going to let the engine and the fluid sit for months before we get to them. We got to get to those immediately too, but we're just going to start with the interior. And once all the wet stuff is out of the way, then we can move up front in the engine bay. If you check out the door cards, they didn't even get any water on them. So this is awesome. Likely our window motors are going to work once we figure out what's wrong electrically with the car. And the biggest hurdle I see here is getting these seats out of the way. Usually when you unbolt the seat, it's simple. It's usually four bolts, but two of the bolts are usually covered by the seat itself and you need the seat electronics to work. We attempted that obviously when the car was being delivered and they're not operating at all. And we could test that again in a little bit, but let's see what sort of wires and connectors we can find first. Usually when you lift these carpets up, you can find different things, sometimes wiring harnesses. In this case, I see a big metal plate, which I'm assuming there'll be something behind there, some module or maybe a fuse block or something, but oh yeah, this is all nice and wet and yellowed and it's still all attached by the carpet that well yeah it's bolted in under the seats here all right we're gonna get as much trim as much carpeting and whatnot on both sides up see if we can't get the seats out and then we'll see what we find <laughs> What do you think the chance that this is causing, you know, a slight electrical issue in this car? Uh, high probability that's causing the chance. <laughs> Look at this. Little bit of uh, corrosion down there where that, uh, that relay is and a lot of sand. 
Do you want a little bit of WD-40? That's what I did. We'll just come back to it like an answer on, as a question on a test. Let's try this one. No, that one was even lower. Oh, Mike. Why would you do that? It's okay. I didn't break it too bad. Look, it just popped off. Mike. Just don't yell at me. No, yeah, I'm going to yell at you. I have it on video. Oh. I ha you, you have you on your video, too, spilling the oil everywhere. That's fu That didn't break a... Eighty-seven million dollar connector and an I didn't Aston break an eighty-seven GBS. million dollar connector. Just, that thing's worth. That's made out of carbon fiber. I just, like whole car. Bent, I just, just bent it a little bit. do a little bit more Yelling penetrating. You're making oil. me nervous. You're activating my ADHD. Just get, give it more penetrating. Uh, yes. Nothing wrong with that. I thought that this was supposed to be. We we're gonna get the car, change the fluids, and start it up. It's, it it's not it like happen. that. No. We've been prying at this specific connector very gently, mind you, for. I don't know, 15 minutes? It's like... It has been that long. Shh, don't... Mike, nobody... Oh! <laughs> if I have to repin that connector... I don't know if you're actually if talking to me. If I have to, to repin that connector, I'm going to go ape... Just look at all the corrosion on every little pin. We can't really see because they're all loaded with sand, but I bet a bunch of those fuses popped. And uh, even the opposite side here, everything that plugs in... It is all corroded. Let's pop this thing open and see what it looks like inside. Ooh, look at that. The corrosion has these pretty much fused to the board. Let's see here. Come on, baby. <laughs> They're stuck in there. The little fuses are coming out. Look, the fuse, look, the pins to the fuse completely corroded off. They're stuck in the board here. Although that fuse itself didn't blow. Let's see. All of them. That one I can't even see. They're all stuck. Look. Oh, look, there. That one came out. And that one's good too. We'll put that to the side. This is a disaster. And I've seen a bunch of waterlog modules before, but I've never seen anything this bad ever. There's really nothing left usable on the circuit board. However, on the casing, there's a sticker which says Volvo and a part number, which ended up being very helpful because when you look these up, they're the same exact part out of one of Volvo's cheapest cars. They're 30 series and they're readily available to use for around 50 to 100 bucks. I bought one for just $60 shipped and I'm anxiously awaiting it in the mail. Could you imagine if we fix this thing for just 60 bucks? That's a bit wishful, but come on. Now, after finding this junction box, which Aston also calls the body control module, I figured we should look for any other fuse boxes. And the first one and easiest one to get to is right under the hood. Opening it up, it looks perfectly mint, which was to be expected as these fuse boxes are made to be weatherproof. But the other box is located in an area where we can't seem to get to, at least not yet, and that's back here in the trunk. When you look around the trunk area, there's no obvious keyhole, and the other problem is the key that came with the car is this boutique key that Aston calls their crystal key, which doesn't come with any physical key, but like I said, there's no hole to put it in the trunk anyway, so that wasn't going to help. We can only hope that when we replace that interior junction box module, maybe it gives us some power to the interior buttons and we can pop the trunk that way because I've searched high and low online and there is no emergency trunk release latch. So for right now, my hands are kind of tied behind my back until we're able to get that replacement junction box and install it in the Aston Martin and hope that some power comes back to the interior electronics, specifically the seats because the current position the passenger seat is in right now is completely jammed up against the back seat and there's no way to get your hands physically back there and lift up that rear passenger seat like we did on the driver's seat. Thank God the driver's seat was up just a hair so we were able to get the seat up. Otherwise, I don't know how we would have removed it from uh, Xavier's trailer. Now, what's so interesting about this car is it's like the polar opposite of the flooded Corvette ZR1 because in that car, the second I pulled the dipstick, well, I thought that build was over before it started. We found so much water and muck on the dipstick and water had definitely got in the engine and in the transmission and in every mechanical component, whereas this one, the engine may seem super clean. Now, obviously we won't be able to check the transmission fluid till we get underneath the car, which we'll do very soon. But uh, it's seeming like the drivetrain on this car is halfway decent, 
whereas the interior electronics are a mess and it's much more modern and it's much more exotic, which makes it a lot more complicated. Either way, if you're super excited about the potential for a dirt cheap Aston Martin DBS, and this car was dirt cheap, but if you're feeling more like me and you're a bit terrified that I bought a very beautiful, but what will end up being a very expensive paperweight, just again, either way, hit the like button and make sure you subscribe to the channel so you get that notification when I come up with the update video on this Aston Martin. The second that junction box comes in, I will be installing it in the car with a few cans of electrical contact cleaner and we'll cross our fingers, hit the button and hope things come to life. Guys, I can't thank each and every one of you enough for watching today and I'll catch you very soon.